Hi folks, Greg Marshawn here again with the Virtual Instructor-Led Training Program brought to you by the Service Sales Academy. Another episode of the Technical Knowledge for Service Advisor series and this episode we're going to talk about sensor basics. Now I got a couple of caveats here and some, and some, some warnings so, so stay tuned for the next couple of minutes here. Why do we care about technical knowledge? Why, why do we care about understanding how sensors work and, and what the basics of those sensor operations are? because it makes the conversations with technicians easier and more productive. Even a little bit of technical knowledge will help you understand what a technician is describing to you. And when you understand that a little bit better and you can put it into that, that complaint concern or that the concern uh, cause correction or complaint cause correction uh, scenario that we talk about in using with the customers during sales, it makes those conversations go a lot better. So those, those better conversations with technicians translate into better conversations with the customers. And the other way around is, as well, as if you're gathering information, then you can bring better information from the customer back to the technician. The bottom line here is, even a little bit of technical knowledge greatly improves your sales process. Now, with the subject of sensor basics, I gotta give a warning here. There are, there's so much to sensors today. Sensors used to be pretty simple and they're no longer simple. So I have probably greatly oversimplified this content. Again, we're just aiming this at promoting better conversations, not fixing cars. So we can keep it simple. We try to keep it in layman's terms and, and there's not a ton of explanation here. It's just a general discussion about automotive sensors and, and how they operate and how we diagnose them. If you have any questions above and beyond what you see here, talk to your technicians. They can fill you on, fill you in on all the rest of the stuff. Now, why do we have sensors? What, what do they do? They monitor stuff, Greg. They sense stuff. Duh. Well, they do. Think about what, what we need. They gather data. And so what do we need data from? Well, we need data about where something is maybe. Did I, did I tell a, a solenoid to turn on and did it? Did it move to a different position? Is it there? Is it back where it wasn't supposed to be? So we can monitor position with sensors. We can monitor speed with sensors. And that could be wheel speed, it could be crankshaft speed, it could be transmission output shaft speed. It could be all kinds of speeds because that's important data when we want to shift the transmission, when we want to know when to fire a cylinder, fire a spark plug, right? Uh, how about temperature? Air conditioning systems, we want to measure the temperature inside and the temperature outside so we can get the, get the customers nice and comfy. How about force? This could be pressure, this could be direction, and we're talking traction control systems, we're talking accident avoidance systems now, uh, pressure, do we have a passenger in our passenger seat? What's the, what's the pressure on that seat cushion? It could be pressure in the EVAP system. So we've got all kinds of forces that we measure in automobiles today and, and collect that data. And then it could be something like the presence of a chemical, presence of, of oxygen. Do we have, how much oxygen do we have inside the exhaust compared to what's outside the exhaust? all kinds of things and this is just a, a small sample of some of what these sensors monitor today. They're all data gathering devices. There's so many that we can't get to them all here but that's okay because we're just going to kind of simplify um, in terms of what they need to work, in terms of how we diagnose it and, and how we talk to a customer about it. What, what the customer might notice when some of these things go wrong so they can connect what they've observed with what you're telling them and get them to that need recognition, part of the buying process, much more quickly to get a yes from your sales process. The main purpose of all of these sensors, of any sensor on an automobile, is to get information to the computer. They're the eyes and ears of the computer. We like to think of computers as really smart. The truth of the matter is computers know what they know. They're really, really fast at doing math, but they need some data. They, they, they need some data in order to make the decisions that we ask them to make. A lot of these sensors are also used to determine if the systems are working. And when I say that, I, I think about the emissions control system. And you know, we have to monitor whether all of these emissions controls are actually working. And if they're not working, we have to turn the check engine light on. All right, and, and you can go check out that check engine light video if you want for a, a better explanation of that. But we've got to use sensors 
to determine if these systems are, are operating as they're designed. And so if the sensor goes bad, well, the test may fail and the check engine light may come on. So a lot of these sensors are, are not just used for engine control or, or automobile control, but they're actually used as, as test devices, test gathering data devices. How they do it? They do it a bunch of different ways. This is you know, old school. Essentially, we had, we had some that would modify a voltage, we had some that would, would generate their own voltage, and we had some that would uh, turn on and off, like a switch. Today, we've got all kinds of sensors that do it all kinds of different ways. And so again, it, I'm not gonna try to stuff it all into this presentation, but in general, they'll, they'll modify a constant voltage, and we'll just look at the change in that voltage, and that'll be the return signal. They could compare one thing to another. Uh, sometimes they'll look at two voltages and just send that data back to the computer and say, hey, this one is this and this one is that, and let the computer make a determination of what's going on. They could compare oxygen levels. They look at oxygen inside the exhaust and compare it to oxygen outside the exhaust. And from that, they'll, they'll modify a voltage signal or, or generate a signal in older vehicles. Then the computer will take that data and make decisions with it. S many still generate a signal, um, although you could probably argue that a little bit, but uh, wheel speed sensors, they'll, they'll modify a voltage or generate a voltage in a certain pattern based on the speed of the wheel spinning. And then the really simple switches, the really simple sensors rather, are switches, and they're still around. It's just, is this on, is this off? Is the door open, is the door closed? Something as simple as that. So there's a number of different ways sensors do it. I don't really think that's the really important part for you, the sales associate. What I really think is that in terms of discussing to the customer, we need to know what these sensors need to work because if there's a problem, it's generally one of these three things that they need to work. They require three things. They require voltage, they require ground, and they have to have some sort of signal out back to the computer. And those are the three things that are associated with most sensors. So if a sensor goes wrong, we have to check these three things. And it could be one of these three things that's missing. And then we can determine what's wrong. To work properly, they sometimes need some external thing as well. Uh, an airflow sensor needs to be able to see the airflow. A sunload sensor needs to be able to see the sunlight through the windshield or through the rear window. Sometimes there's moving parts. In the case of a uh, output shaft sensor or a wheel speed sensor, it's gotta, it's gotta see a part moving, a crankshaft sensor. It, it's gotta be able to see the crankshaft spinning around in order to do what it does. So many sensors have to be able to quote unquote see what they're measuring, okay? So there can't be a, a physical restriction or a physical problem related to that or we'll get bad data again. Today, a lot of sensors are what we call solid state meaning there are no moving parts. They're just, they're made of semiconductor materials. They get flexed, they get exposed to certain chemicals, they get um, exposed to, to sunlight, if you will, and this causes chemical reactions inside them that will modify that voltage signal and or generate a voltage signal. They're essentially tiny computers. And, and that's really what they are. They're simple computers. They're, they're like computers of 30 and 40 years ago, but they are tiny computers, and so they'll, they'll need voltage to, to do their job, they'll need a ground to do their job, and then they'll need some sort of action or reaction in order to, to modify this signal. All right, well, if that's the case, what goes wrong? Well, let's keep this really simple. The wires coming in that give it voltage could be bad. Maybe the sensor itself can't do anything. So it has gone bad and therefore we can't have an output voltage. Or the wires going out from the sensor to the computer have gone bad. So we could have bad input, bad processing, or bad output. Just like that engine control segment that we did, right? So we're looking for data into a sensor, we're looking for the sensor to do its thing, and we're looking for data out to the sensor. And if it doesn't have one of those three things, we've gotta either diagnose it if it's in or out, we know it's a bad sensor if we have both of those, or we gotta figure out what's going on with the sensor itself. Now, speaking of that, remember what we said about those external trigger things. It's gotta be able to see what it's sensing, right? So if anything gets in the way and causes it not to be able to generate a, a signal, 
The sensor's not the problem. It's this other thing that's the problem. So uh, a magazine on top of the dashboard that's covering the sun load sensor will give it faulty information. Move the magazine, all of a sudden everything works well. Wheel speed sensor. It needs to see that reluctor ring on the, on the axle or on the wheel bearing going round and round. If something goes wrong with that and it can't see those teeth or it can't see the, the magnetic fields, then it's not going to do anything. Replace what's wrong and all of a sudden the sensor and everything else works just fine. So sometimes it's a physical restriction or a, or a, a physical problem having nothing to do with the sensor that made things go wrong. The wires coming in and out, look, for the most part, the wires coming into a sensor, that voltage that's being brought to the sensor allows the sensor to work. That voltage is generally originating at the computer, at engine control computer, transmission control computer, or whatever the manufacturer calls it. You could call it a bunch of different things today. The signal wires, the wires coming out of the sensor going back to the computer, they're really, really important, right? Because they carry the data. And some of these are on a, on a computer network. You can think of the, the wires out from the computer and the wires back to the computer as a, as a two-way street. And this is especially important with, with networks because many, many of these sensors today, they're on a computer network. You know, like I said, they're, they're little tiny computers. Well, if they're little tiny computers, then we can network them all together and network them with the major computers in the automobile. So think of it as, as a highway with two wires, wires in, wires out. Those have to be intact and operating properly for the sensor to be doing its job. Now, some sensors in old school, ground wires can either link to the computer or they can be connected to one another. They have to have ground still because this is the way electricity works. We won't get into that. Um, more and more often now, we're seeing dedicated grounds. The ground's coming right from the computer. But boy, there's so much going on in an automobile in terms of sensors and computers. That's an awful lot of ground wires. So many of them are still spliced together. All right. So wires, two-way street from the computer back to the computer. And then we've got a ground wire that allows it to do its thing. That's the, the simple version of that. How do technicians test these sensors? Well, they can measure the output signals, and that's generally what they'll do first, is they'll look to see if the sensor's putting anything out, and what is it putting out, and is it okay or not okay? To do that, they'll use an oscilloscope, they'll use a scan tool, they may use a voltmeter. The oscilloscope essentially is a tool that draws an electrical picture. It, it, it draws a waveform, it, it, draws a, it draws a graph, it's voltage over time uh, on a screen, and they can interpret that by comparing that to a known good uh, picture, if you will, a, no, a known good scope signal. Scan tools, they give us numbers. Sometimes they'll draw pictures, um, but they give us they give us values and they'll, they'll tell us if systems are on and off, if switches are on and off, it'll give us an output voltage, it'll sometimes give us an input voltage, all depending on the systems. Um, it's not always the preferred tool by, by the really good diagnostic folks because the oscilloscopes are much more real time and the voltmeter is much more real time. So they use, they'll measure voltage. Uh, they can measure alternating current voltage, they can measure direct current voltage, they can, they can do various things. They measure frequency with voltmeters. There's all kinds of tricks that they know, but these are the, the three main tools that they are trained to use to diagnose sensor problems. They'll do the same thing, apply the same tools to the input signals from the computer to the sensor. So if the sensor output is bad, all right, we gotta figure out what it needed to work, and that's a signal in from the computer and the ground. And so they'll use the, the scope, the scan tool, and the voltmeter to test the signal coming into the sensor to make sure it has that and it is what it should be. And then there's the grounds. So if it has a signal coming in, let's check the grounds. If it has the grounds and it has a signal coming in, the sensors should be doing its thing. They'll use generally a voltmeter to check grounds. Can you use an oscilloscope? Yes, you can. Can you use a scan tool? Eh, not always successfully, but that depends on what we're testing, what we're doing, and again, we don't need to get into that. Oscilloscopes, scan tools, voltmeters are what they're using to test these electrical signals. What's a customer gonna notice when these things go wrong? Well, most of the sensors will trip a check engine light for a number of reasons. Now, the check engine light may or may not tell you exactly what sensor has the problem. In other words, if, if a sensor is reporting faulty information, then it may fail a test that the computer was running. And so that test failure will turn the check engine light on and 
Yeah, it's because of a sensor, but the code is not going to tell you what sensor. The other thing that you see go wrong is that the code will be for a specific sensor, but that doesn't mean the sensor's wrong, right? It could mean the sensor's bad, certainly, but it could also mean the voltage output from the computer is bad, the wires are broken, the output wires back to the computer are bad. It could even mean a completely different sensor on the same network is causing the problem, but it's tripping a code for a different sensor. That's the challenge of being a technician today. It's not easy to diagnose anymore. And, and that's really important when talking to the customers is look, just because you have a code and just because the code says this, there are a bunch of possibilities here. With network systems, it honestly could be any other sensor or any other computer on the network that's causing the real problem. It could be a bad sensor, but it could also be the sensor doesn't have what it needs to work and we need to figure out why that is. When that check engine light comes on, the customer may or may not notice poor fuel economy, but I promise you if the emission control systems are not working or most of the engine control systems are not working, then fuel economy is going to suffer. And if they really pay close attention to it, they'll discover they're not quite getting the fuel economy that they were getting or that they should be getting. You could have warning lights on, it could be a, a brake light on, an ABS light, something like that. You know, Whatever system requires those sensors to operate properly, if the sensors go bad and or it thinks the sensors go bad, then it'll turn various warning lights on. You could also have something as simple as bad information on the dash. Um, think about a fuel gauge, fuel level sensor, if you will, right? Fuel gauge sensor, fuel level sensor, how much fuel is in my tank, wire breaks, what happens to the fuel gauge? It goes full empty or full full, and that's it. So we get bad information on the dash, could be an indication of a bad sensor. So customer can notice all kinds of things. What do we need to do? Well, I think we've already established, we need to diagnose it first. We can't just pull a code and put a sensor in it. We need to diagnose it, we need to understand what does the computer think is wrong? What do we think is wrong? Is the sensor giving us an appropriate output? Does it have the input it needs? Uh, it, are the ground circuits intact? What do we need to do? So we have to diagnose first, and, and your job is to sell diagnosis. Go check out that video on selling diagnosis. And then based on that diagnosis, we're gonna replace parts, we're gonna fix wires, we're gonna do some sort of repair, and then we're gonna retest all of this to ensure proper operation of everything, okay? So the bottom line here is sensors are the eyes and ears of the vehicle operating systems. They're the eyes and ears of the computer. Some are simple, some are super complex. Just the way it is, they gather data. However they do it, they gather data. Bad data means bad decisions by the computer. Technicians will use oscilloscopes, voltmeters, scan tools to determine if they're operating properly or if they're not operating properly because of some external factor. A lot of sensors will go bad over time or, or due to operating conditions. I mean, look, 300,000 miles on an automobile and you drive it at 70 miles an hour down the road over, over bumps and in the snow and in the ice and you crash it into stuff, things are gonna go bad. That's just the way it is. But without all these sensors, you might see poor fuel economy, warning lights, drivability problems. No matter what, the customer is gonna need you to explain what's going on, to explain the diagnostic process, and to repair their automobile, all right? So go talk to your technicians. The next time they say, hey, it needs this sensor, that sensor, ask them, what would the customer notice if this sensor is bad? What do we have to do to test this and simplify it for the, the customer? Give them a really basic understanding like we've tried to do here in this program, and you'll get more sales. Until we meet again, folks, keep up the great work and never stop learning.